This is Corinne. You know what to do. Leave a message. Hey, babe, I'm just leaving court. Um, I'm not sure if you already heard the good news or not, but we did it. We got him $27 million. Call me when you get this. Hey, Mr. G. How's it going? You eat this hospital food every day, Brian. Tell me how you feel. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. I definitely hear you. That's why I uh, brought you your favorite. My man, Brian, thanks a lot. Now, if your doctor finds out I snuck that in, I don't think he'd agree with you. So uh, hurry up and eat the evidence. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I see that uh, Mr. Craig went home. Well, you could say that. He killed himself last night. I saw it coming. He was getting more and more depressed every day. All those kids and grandkids, and nobody came to see him. And all he was concerned about was getting those kids and grandkids Christmas gifts. Those no good for nothing. <sighs> I'm sorry to hear that. You would never do that, would you? You crazy? Not as hard as I fought to live. Oh, I almost forgot. It's, uh, it's official. Check it out. That's a lot of money, son. Most people would be happy to get all that money. But all the money in the world can't give me back what I lost. Well, I know it's not much, but uh, hopefully this helps a little. What's this? It's an autographed Kobe Bryant plaque from his last championship. I uh, got it to celebrate your win. I, I, I'm sorry, sir. Thought you'd like it. You're always saying how Kobe's the GOAT and all. I do, Brian. But it's been a long time since someone has given me anything. Maybe today is the start of a new beginning, sir. Where are you from, son? Detroit, by way of Georgia. Your folks really have raised a nice young man. I don't know what I would have did this past year without you. I sure do really appreciate you. Thank you, but uh, you know, I'm just glad I can help. I mean, you've taught me so much in this last year. You uh, should be getting released soon, right? I wish that was the case. What are they saying? Another week or two? No, doctor said I got about another week or two to live. I know it's kind of tough, but... Nah. Nah, Mr. G. I'm not trying to hear that, man. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I mean, doctors make mistakes. Okay, they make mistakes. They're not perfect. You're not getting soft on me over there, are you? No more than you did when I gave you that gift. Just thought we'd have more time, that's all. Look, son. I may not have the time, but you do. 
Can you promise me that you'll find that kid, my son, and my daughter, and give them the money I left for them? Can you promise me that? I promise, Mr. G. I'll find them. Come on, Destiny. Don't make me be late. If you quit bothering me, nerd, you, I'll be out of here quicker. I hate you. Mom, tell us to come out the bathroom. She's gonna make me late. Destiny, five more minutes and I mean it. Give her five minutes, won't she? Man, why does she always gonna stay in the bathroom so long? That's what girls do to look good, son. You'll appreciate it when you start liking girls. I like girls now, just not that girl. What's her name? Come on, tell me. Tell me what's her name. That's why you've been smelling like my cologne lately. Well, if you don't get in there and get ready for school. Is this tie okay? Okay for what? Where did Mr. Garner's you know? Are you serious, Brian? Mr. Rosenberg made it perfectly clear that you weren't supposed to attend the funeral. What's the big deal? Hmm? They won't even know I went. No one's going to be there. His nurse told me that I was Mr. Garner's only visit his entire hospital stay. Just let it go, Brian. I'm trying. I'm trying. But it just don't feel right Let him go out alone like that. Brian, the man is dead. He already went out alone, okay? What if no one shows up to his funeral, huh? He don't deserve that. I don't think he'll know, Brian. Look, my dad pulled a lot of strings to get you this job. Don't blow it for something stupid like this. I hear you. I do. I have to go. I have to show Malik a few houses today. Is he uh, really that arrogant a-hole they say he is? No, in fact, he's quite charming. <laughs> if I didn't know any better, I'd uh, be a little jealous. Well, it's a good thing that you know better, huh? Okay. All right, but uh, no staying out late, okay? Because mm -hmm. we promised Corey and Tamara we'd come over and play cards and have dinner, okay? Yeah, okay, but I have to meet you there. Something wrong? I just don't want to ruin my lipstick. That's all. When you start taking a suitcase to work? It's just a few things I need to take to the cleaners. That's all. Mm. Okay. Are you sure you don't want me to go to the doctor with you because I can call out? No, no, I'll be fine. Besides with Christmas coming up and me not working, we can't afford for you to take off. I'm so sorry, Dre. Sorry for what? For being the love of my life. <laughs> now you just make sure you own up to that deal you made me because we got 20 years left. And I look forward to honoring each and every moment of our agreement, Mr. Jones. Mm -hmm. Mr. Jones. You better hurry up so you won't be late. You just make sure you call me and let me know what the doctor says, okay? Yeah, I will. All right. Love you. Love you. Mmm. Mmm. Okay. Excuse me. Hi, I'm Brian. Okay, Brian. And you are? Are you really trying to pick up on me at a funeral? Nah, it's, it's just good to meet someone besides myself when you Mr. Gardner, that's all. I didn't know him. Uh oh, oh. Uh, so you just show up at strangers' funerals and bail out? <laughs> no, I'm not like you. 
I don't crash funerals to pick up on people. No, no, no. Let's let's hope we got off on the wrong foot here. Let, let's let's start all over again. Mm. 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 What, what's what's mm. You're either a used car salesman or you work at the mall. See, that's how much you know. Because this is an Italian imported suit, tailored fit to make. Then you got played. You got jokes. I like that. I like that. No, like I was saying, I'm just trying to find somebody who knew Mr. Gardner, that's all. I mean, take a look around with the two people at his funeral. You don't find that strange? Like I said, I didn't know him. Excuse me. Summers? Hello, Kim. Thank you for coming here. Have a seat. Can I get you some water or something? Oh, yeah, no, I'm I'm good. Actually, I'm not good after seeing that look on your face. I'm a little nervous. Is it really that bad, Dr. Summers? I'm afraid so. Your test results confirms that you have cardiac sacrosis, which is a potentially fatal heart disease. Potentially fatal disease like I could die? Unfortunately, yes. Um, so is there a cure for this cardio? Cardiac sacrosis? Well, there's this brilliant heart specialist, Dr. Bazzari. She has a cutting edge treatment, which has a 95% success rate. Okay, so I just go to this doctor and get cured, right? I wish it was that simple, Kim. But Dr. Bazzari's treatments are still in a trial phase which means they're very pricey. And unfortunately, your insurance doesn't cover it. So how much are we talking, doctor? I don't know for sure, but about 75,000, maybe even more. Where are we supposed to get that kind of money from? Huh? I mean, we're barely making it as it is. This is insane. You know what? My husband, he works hard to pay our health insurance every month. Now you're saying it can't help no, us? No, I'm not the enemy, Kim. <gasps> you getting upset is not gonna help you. Hey, aren't you the school's new janitor? Like, go away, little punk. Have I smoked weed on school grounds? Her boss is a trick. It's a, it's a medical re I got diabetes, man. It's for my back is messed up. Who is you anyway? The mini marines or the Salvation Army? Man, get out of here. Go away. I'm busy. When's Mr. Garner coming back? He was just practicing the gym during lunch. Never. What do you mean by never? Never. He, he dead. Plus, he got evicted, man. Get out of here, man. I'm busy. I'm trying to do something. Bro, don't make me go all gay on you out here. He's lying, right? I don't know, sweet. Maybe that's why Mr. Gardner hasn't been at school for a while. Hope he's not dead. Me too. He was a real cool dude. Hello, you've reached the desk of Andre Jones. I'm currently not in the office right now to take your call, but if you leave a message, I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Happy holidays. Hey, Andre, it's 
So urgent, huh? Come on in. Have a seat, Andre. Look, this is not easy for me to say right now, but you know our numbers this year were terrible. So, Mr. Cobb asked me to fire you and a couple of the guys today. <laughs> That's not funny, Tom. You serious? You're a skilled guy, Andre. Shouldn't have a problem finding something somewhere else. And that makes it all right? I got two kids and a sick wife to take care of. And your Fortune 500 company fires me after 13 years of dedicated service? A week before Christmas? Where's the company holiday spirit, Tom? Huh? What's your problem? Why you got that boy look on your face? Man, they're making that magic. We were supposed to eat two hours ago, Malik. Hold up. You got Malik messed up if you think I'm gonna stop creativity for you to eat. You on Malik time, baby. What is that, like CP time? Oh, you funny, huh? Okay. Let's see if you find this funny. Done being your side dude, so you need to ditch that lame boyfriend of yours, or you can walk. I am. Um, I just need a little time. That's all. Yeah, I hear you. You know, all I can do is think about how good you were last night. <laughs> yeah. Is he filming us? And going live? Problem. You said you was dumping that lame boyfriend of yours anyway, right? Cut it off. Cut it off. Hey, yeah, bro. Just, just cut it off, man. Matter of fact, go get us something to eat. We're gonna be here for a while. And I feel a banger coming on. You want the same thing? Yeah. No, I can't stay, Malik. I have somewhere to be at seven tonight. Yeah, I know. Right here with me. Because tonight is the night you gonna show me. Oh, that's mine. I love spending time with you. You know that. I'm not prepared. 
Listen, I got you. So make a list of what you need, and I have Camille pick it up for you. But right now, you need to make a decision. We going to end this, or you going to be my girl? I guess then I'm your girl. Mm-hmm. Baby, what's going on? What's all this stuff on the floor? Talk to me. Whatever it is, we can get through it together, I promise. This is gonna take a miracle. Dr. Summers said I have a rare heart condition. And I could die. Die? I thought you were getting better. Okay, it can be cured, right? Yeah, it can be cured. But it costs $75,000. And our insurance doesn't cover it. You have the most beautiful spirit in the world. And you are the reason that I know that angels exist. God's not gonna let nothing happen to you, and neither will I. Where are we gonna get $75,000 from, huh? We're barely making it as it is. I can't answer that right now, but I know somehow, some way, God's gonna make it work. Maybe, maybe I could get something part-time to help out around here. Uh, what is it, baby? I can you, you okay? You need anything? You hungry? You want some, no, no, no. some drink? No. I'm just, I'm just, I'm tired. I'm really tired. This new medication is making me drowsy, so I'm just, I'm tired. Okay. Later, get some rest. <sighs> Thank you for coming to check on me, babe. You better get back to work before Tom has a fit. I, uh... What is it? What is it, baby? What is it? I'll be home before you know it. Just call me uh -huh. if you need anything, okay? Mm -hmm. What's with all the drama, Al? I thought you said you could handle Brian. Yeah, and? Yeah, and? So why did he make contact with Gardner's daughter at his funeral today? What? Are you sure? Does that look like I'm sure? Huh? I don't think I have to remind you it's not every day we get $27 million gift wrapped and dropped in our laps like this. You think I don't know this, Al? I don't know what you know, Ray, but if your boy Brian messes this up, he's gonna piss off a lot of people. You got me? Do you forget who I am, Al? Or should I remind you? 
All I'm saying, Ray, is we got a lot riding on this. Go tell your people that I'm gonna get Brian and put him on track. You just remember, this is my big payday too, Al. We're not doing Mr. Danger. Mimi, where's Kevin? I need to talk to him. Have you lost your mind? I know you remember what happened last time. It's Kim. She could die. Come on. You bet I'll be lying. Must have death wish to come in here, Drake. Just hear him out, Skilo. It's about Kim. I don't care what it's about. She might die, Kevin. Oh. Oh. Why you insist on calling me my government name, Drake? Because I need to talk to Kim's brother. Not Stilo. Oh. Uh. You do this all day, Drake. Okay. You were right. Right? Right about what? Everything. I couldn't take care of her. That couldn't provide a good life for her. Everything. Think I didn't know that? I've always been weak. That's one thing that won't change about you, Trey. What was I supposed to do? They were gonna kill her. So you brought them to me. Now, every night, I gotta relive that nightmare of being left for dead. But I survived. Funny thing though, they did. Mom is a month. Hey, this ain't about me and you 17 years ago. Kim needs you now. And if she don't get those expensive heart treatments, do I really have to say it? She could die, Kevin. Ain't that poetic justice. I get to see you do one thing worse than die, and that's to suffer. Get mine. Why you gotta be so cold like this, huh? Him is the one who was there for you. Do every court appearance, do every hospital stay, and to every single time that you got arrested. And for that, I spared your life. Who made me change my mind, Dre? Oh. You're... <laughs> what's up, man? What up, what up, what up? Yeah. Hey, where's Corinne? Oh, she's running a little late. She had to show Malik some homes. 
Hey, uh, I heard that guy's a jerk. Is he? I don't know. But hopefully he buys one of those homes she's showing him because that commission check will surely help my pockets. I mean, you're still making good money at the firm, right? Yeah. A Korean spends as fast as I can make. Hey, right? Yeah, she is. Hey, wait. Where's Corinne? Oh, she'll be here a little later. She okay. uh, had to close on a big deal okay, today. She is still coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, because, you know, after that last time, she put a little whipping on y'all. Mm -hmm. Afraid she was afraid to oh, come back. I didn't think we was going to mention that tonight, but... uh, Y'all serious? Hmm? You, you know we let y'all win, right? I said what now? I said you know we let y'all win, right? Oh. Yeah. No, no, seriously. It's clearly stated in the rule book that the visitor has to let the home team win the first time when they're home. Oh, but right. Yeah. You know, you sound really lame right now, right? Okay. Like, really, really lame. I want you two to remember this, okay? Because it's on. It's on like Donkey Kong. Ooh. Okay, we're not taking no prisoners, Ooh. all right? Y'all brought it on your cell. Oh. All right? Hmm, okay, yeah, whatever, Brian. Uh, baby, let me know when Corinne gets here so I can go finish making dinner, okay? Okay. <laughs> Got a real one with her, bro. Yeah, man. T's a real one. I don't know where I'd be without her. <sighs> So how's work going, man? Just trying to get these bills paid, man. Yeah, I hear that. But uh, you love doing what you're doing, right? I mean, you've been talking about owning your own PI firm since we was kids. Yeah, but I thought it'd be more exciting. You know, they got me out here looking for people's dogs, cats. I haven't even found the mascot of cow. Well, uh, I might have something for you, man. You mean with your firm? Sort of. Sort of. Um... Some investigators at my firm have been trying to find Mr. Gardner's daughter and his kid for 11 months now, but they haven't found anything. And um, in about a week or two, the firm takes over control of the settlement. 11 months? I mean, does the PI have any leads? No, not at all. Not at all. And, and I could be wrong, but I feel like they don't want these people to be found. And what makes you say that? Because I strongly believe that they tricked Mr. Gardner into signing some papers stating that if they don't find no one in his family, that the firm takes over control of the settlement. Mm-hmm. Well, I get started. I just need, like, a picture, a name, something. Yeah, I don't have a name. But I do have a license plate of a woman that claims to not know Mr. Gardner, but we were the only two people at his funeral. All right. Well, that should be enough to get me started. And this kid named Marshawn should have been easy to find. He goes to Lakeside Prep, where Mr. Garner used to work before he got hospitalized. But the PI say that when they questioned the two kids named Marshawn in that school, they claimed that they said they didn't know who he was. PI could have put pressure on the kid to deny, you know, knowing the guy. I don't know. But whatever the case is, we got to find him. And we got to find him fast. Sounds good, man. I'll be on it first thing in the morning. Talk to me about pay. Yeah, there's no pay on this one, bro. Pay is pro bono. Man, well, you know, PIs can't work pro bono. CT, just, just trust me on this one, okay, bro? Trust me. All right? Good, man. What's up? What's for dinner? Man, I don't know what she making back there. Damn, sis. So no good night, probably see you later, man. Huh? She gonna act like you forgot. Oh, they left dead that night, you mean? We can go let it go, Steve. That was 17 years ago. Tell that to my mind. Seems like yesterday to me. And I know you're not trying to play me anyway. You think Dre would have come here begging you for money if he really didn't need it to save Kim's life? You know what I can't understand? Why can't they go get it from that God they pray to every day, huh? I heard you perform miracles, right? I swore to mama that I would keep this family together, but I can't do it alone. Kim stopped being family a long time ago when she chose to take his side. Let it go, Skilo. You survived that horrible night. And instead of you moving on, you choose to wallow in the past where only pain and anger live. I see her teardrops. From heaven, heaven, heaven I see her looking down on us From heaven Asking what has become of her family I see her staring at us in disbelief 
from all the separation and fighting. I see her battling her pain and her Seeing that her family has forgotten their worth. Now picture her trying to be strong. Picture. Now picture her trying to hold back her tears. We're making an angel cry. It is 12 o'clock. Where have you been, Dre? I'm like, you've been drinking. I'm not going down that road with you again. I'm good. I just had a weak moment. I would never put you through that again, I swear. What happened? Nothing. I slipped and I failed at work. You slipped and fell at work. Hmm. You know I can always tell when you're lying to me, Mr. Jones. So you ready to tell me the truth? I want to care of him. And ask him for the money for your treatment. Why would you do that? Because it's the only way I saw fit to get that much money that quick. Evidently, he said no. Good thing, too, because if I die before I take any of his dirty money. But what other options do we have? We have to do something, Kim. Weren't you the one that said God would make a way? Yeah, and he will. At some point, we have to let the kids know what's happening. I don't think that's a good idea. We have to make them aware, get them prepared, do teach them CPR or something, just in case something bad happens. No, okay. I don't know. Poor Destiny, she'd worry herself to death. A little macho man, Marshawn. He'd never leave my side trying to be my protector. They have a right to know, Kim. I know. I just, I don't even worry them with my problems. Your problems are our problems. I'll, I'll handle it, okay? I'll talk to them in the morning before they go to school. Okay. Did he get you that better one? I, I, I gave him one. No, you did. No, you did. No, you did. Yeah. No, you, did. Yeah. you can't fight. I, I can mm -hmm. fight a little. No. Okay. Come on, let's start it all. Okay. Kitty? 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 How name is that for a cat? Yeah, that's definitely her. Hey, but good looking though. All right. What's up, DT? 
Hey, Tekki, you still haven't heard from Corinne. Yeah, well, uh, I saw something on ENZ. Things you should take a look at. Don't you think that's pretty insensitive, bro? I'm over here worried sick about Corinne. You want me to watch some gossip news crap? Trust me. It's important. Take a look at it. Call you tomorrow. Here. Hey, I'm tired of that phone vibrating all night. It's killing my vibe. It's probably my father, Malik. He's worried. I need to answer it. Let me see your phone. Let me see your phone. Why'd you do that? Because I'm here trying to make hits, and this phone going off every five minutes. It's distracting me. But you know what? I've been thinking. Man, it's time we clear some things up. You love me, right? I wouldn't be here if I didn't know. Well, then call him and end it right now. Hmm. Call him. Fine. If this is what it takes to prove to you that I love you, then let's do it. <laughs> hey, I put it on speakerphone so I can hear you do it. I take it you're still a Malik, huh? If you would have paid attention, you would have seen that I was unhappy. Well, I guess attention is the only thing I didn't pay for. Because Lord knows I paid everything else for your needy. Great. Then it works out perfectly for the both of us. <laughs> What's so funny? Nah. I'm just imagining your face when Malik breaks up with you in a couple months, if not sooner. 
Whatever, I'll send some other pick of my things in here. Yeah, that's cool. They can just get it out the dumpster. All right, pull it in, y'all. We need to have a family talk. Good morning, Mr. J. M. Dog. And Miss, take my breath away. Get lost, nerd, before I really take your breath away. One day, you'll understand the language of love. One day, you'll understand the words get lost. Okay. That's enough. Remember, we need to have a family discussion. Okay, Mr. J. You got my attention. Is our talk about mom or Christmas? A little bit of both, son. You see, your mom, she, she hasn't been feeling well lately. He's and... almost 13, Dad. Tell him the truth. Tell him that mom might die. Dad, she's wrong, right? It's complicated, son. You see, mom, she needs a very expensive treatment to help her get better. And right now, we're still trying to figure out how we can make that happen. And we will. It's both of y'all's fault. What? How is it our fault? All those sleepless nights, Mama stayed up taking care of you when you were sick as a little baby. That's why she's tired all the time. Destiny. That is not true or nice. Apologize to your brother. Was it nice? All those nights your drinking problems stressed her out and made her cry? You think you're the only one hurting? Look around. We're all hurting. But we cannot let anger or fear tear this family apart. Then why? Why her? Why mom? I don't know. But we need to let our love and our faith keep us strong because together is the only way we're going to be able to get through this. Trust me, your mom's going to be just fine. Yeah, so fine now that Christmas is all messed up and we won't be getting any gifts. Of course you will. Every day we wake up is a gift. This Christmas, our gifts will come from heaven. And what gifts are those? Love. Happiness. Family. And good health. Look at me. Right here and right now, we need to start cherishing life's true gifts. And not those material ones. Y'all yeah, gonna make a brother crop in here. Squeak. Sorry, Mr. J. I'm sorry, Dad. I didn't mean those things that I said. It's all good. I probably had that coming. Now bring it in. Family on three. One, two, three. Family! Now get out of here before you miss your bus. What's up, CT? All right, what's happening? Uh, got a little info on your mystery, girl, and it's deep. Okay, spell it. All right, so first of all, her name was Crystal Porter up until the age of 17, and then she got adopted and became Crystal Mansfield. Mansfield? Like Carolyn Mansfield? The woman whose deathbed confession got old man Gardner pardoned? Exactly. And I don't think it's a coincidence that they adopted her and changed her name. Yeah, she has to be the daughter Mr. Gardner was searching for all those years. Bingo. You get an address for her? Yeah, got an address in Virginia, but, but, found an Airbnb rented to her name until 4 p.m. in Tarzana. I'm parked outside. My man, Corey. This P.I. thing's you. Text me the address and I'll see you there in 30 minutes. I bet. Hey, 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 hey. 
Are you all right with that old uh, Corinne thing? Yeah, 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 I'm good. I'm good, yeah. Actually, I feel better than I felt in a long time. Uh, you know, because I was, uh, you had your boy a little worried. I know you and her was kind of tight. Truth is, even though she was a total stranger, I felt more of a connection with that crystal woman than I ever did with Corinne. <laughs> Word? Is that right? Look, CT, if she is Gardner's daughter, it's going to be a nice payday. I hope so, because the only pro bono I know is Cher. Yeah, that's not funny, CT. Yeah, not even a little bit. See, see what I did? Don't quit your day job, bro. Mm -mm, don't do that. No, because she's a professional singer. Pro, pro, she's, a, she's a pro. Bro, you know, you, you're going to have to get that hate out your heart, man. It's not good for your arteries. Look, just sit tight, all right? I'll see you in 30. All right. All right. I'm working on something. I think I have an easy mark for us. Four million? You said it was one million, right? What do you want me to do? He's mad at me right now, but I can fix that. Good morning, sexy. Last night was amazing, wouldn't you say? Mm, no. Amazing isn't the word I would use to describe last night. Oh, I feel you. More like incredible, huh? <laughs> yeah. No, I was thinking more like pitiful. That's okay, baby. Because Malik don't chase. <laughs> Got me messed up. She trying to play. Come in. Hey. hey, man, take a seat. So what do you have for me, Sean? Hey, that girl's DNA we lifted at the funeral, tested conclusive. She's definitely Gardner's daughter. What do you have on the kid? Everything's there in the report. Mm -hmm. uh, family members, hangout spots, addresses. And where he goes to school. Good job, Sean. We'll take it from here. Yes, sir. What is it, Al? I'm kind of busy here. Uh, we got a problem. What kind of problem? And the kind of problem standing between us and $27 million. Oh, that type of problem. And where is this problem? Staying at an Airbnb in Burbank. I'm sending you the info right now. I got it. Hey, isn't that the girl from the funeral? Yeah, it's Gardner's daughter. Does she know about the settlement? No, and let's keep it that way. Did, did Sean send you the info on the kid? Yeah. Okay, keep me posted, Ray. Brother Skeela, like what you did with this place. My man Ray Ray, tell my people your bad. You get real nervous when people moving around here with bags, you feel me? It's just half the paper, but yeah, it's all right. You count that.
So you want us to snatch some kid up, huh? Look, I would have done it myself, but I didn't want to get my hands dirty. So just snatch the kid up and that's it, right? Just take the kid, hold him till Monday after five. Wait, make it Tuesday just to be safe. We could do that. Just as long as the kid is over 10. I, I think that's something. A gangster with morals. Look, no worry. The kid is 13. Here, take this burner phone. We can communicate. So, we're going to need some information on the kid. Name, picture, and address. You know the deal, Ray, right? All in the burner phone. Let's make it happen. Is this some type of joke? What's wrong? Look at this picture. Why would someone want to kidnap Marshawn? The only way they're going to be safe is if we go get them and bring them back here. It's Sunday afternoon. You know where they're at. Yeah, we know. Give them Reverend White all they want. Let's go get them. You know, if they see you, they're not going to come, especially after what happened the other day. Did you go in? They trust you. I'll be outside waiting. She still in there? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna take the front. You go around back just in case she leaves out the back door. All right. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What is this, CT? Spy cam, three in one. You're gonna love it. All right. It's a hey, it's a micro audio recording device and visual recorder, but it sends out a distress signal, okay, to a GPS tracking system. How does this thing work? You uh, pop your hands. So, you mean to tell me if I get in trouble, I'm just supposed to clap my hands? Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, maybe I should have got the one with the remote control. Yeah, yeah. Next time? Next time. Okay. Go around back. If she comes out, don't approach her to call, okay? All right, got it. All right. Brian? It's the wall. What are you doing here, Brian? Uh, I was supposed to meet a friend for lunch, but I think I got the wrong address or something. What, what brings you here? I was with a client. Look, son, Karina told me about last night. She's just all messed up. I found that hard to believe, son. She cried all night. In fact, she felt so bad she couldn't sleep at all. Really? It would mean a whole lot to me if you just go and call her. Go by and see her. Look. Just hear her out. Corinne loves you, Brian. Yeah, I, I don't know. I just need some time. Maybe I'll call her later. Later? Just might be too late. Um, I gotta take this. Just one second. Yeah. Where you at? I'm in front of Corinne's father. Why is Corinne's father? You know what? Never mind. All right, just get rid of him. All right, she's headed your way. That was my friend. Looks like lunch is still on, so I, I gotta get going, but uh, it was great talking to you, Mr. Paul. Think about what I said, Brian. Yes, sir. Oh, no. Not you again. Are you stalking me? Stalking you? 
Are you crazy? No, are you? I'm about to call the cops. Well, maybe the three of us need to go inside and mess this thing up. No, I'm not going anywhere with you or your crazy friend. Maybe this will help you change your mind. Now let's go inside, shall we? Give me your phone. Give me your phone. Now sit down. You idiot. Do you actually think somebody's gonna hear you clapping your hands? Look, Mr. Wall, leave her out of this, okay? If you're mad at me about Korean, let's hash this out, all right? Just you and I. Yeah, whatever this crazy did, I have nothing to do with it. That's what you're wrong. You have everything to do with it. But I don't even know this idiot. But I know you, Crystal Mansfield, the daughter of Diane Mansfield, Charles Gardner. How'd you know about that? Are you really that stupid? I'm the one that got you that job. Me, Corinne, and Al was playing you from day one. But you would not let it go. So what do I have to do with all of this? The state awarded your father $27 million. $27 million? You won't be seeing a penny of it. But I don't understand. The attorneys that represented your father tricked him into signing over control of his settlement if you weren't found by Monday. Oh, so he's here to keep me from getting the money? So is that why you're here too? No, no. I was your father's attorney and his friend. And I made a promise to him that I would make sure you and that kid got the money that was willed to you. So I have a sibling? No, the kid just helped your father learn how to read. The money he left the kid was just his way of saying thank you. I want them to disappear forever. Am I clear? Yeah. Got you, boss. Tie him up. Yeah. I'm gonna need some help here. So what's the problem? It's two of them. Ray only said the one. Handle it. Teddy, you the boss. Saved us, bro. I thought he was gone. Oh, Chris, it's my best friend, Corey. Corey, it's Chris. Oh, so the weirdo has a friend. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, it's nice to meet you. Uh, uh, excuse me one second. I just, I just need to do that one. I just need to do that one. Yeah, what? One time. One time. Tick tock. Real quick. What? One time. I saved you. One time. One time. Tick tock. Real quick. One time. One time. All right, I saved you. There you go. There you go. Tell me what happened. Tell me what happened. You saved us, okay? All right, you satisfied now? All right, we gotta call the cops before he wakes up. They already did, right? They should be any second. All Christmas is upon us. 
And most of us, you know, oh, you know who you are, will overlook life's greatest gift and measure Christmas success by the value and material give, give, or receive. Can I get an amen? Can I get an amen? But it's time for a change. Not tomorrow, not next week, but today. Oh, y'all don't have no problems thanking someone for the new big screen TV that's 65, 75, I got a 35. Or the designer purse, Louis, Gucci, Coach. Or that new PlayStation 12. But when it comes to thanking God for the amazing gift by giving us everyday life, love, happiness, family, and good health. Y'all come up short. I said y'all come up short. Y'all don't hear me. Somebody says it's time for a change. Somebody says it's time for a change. We're going to close today's service from a song from our youth choir. Sister Jones, thank you for waiting. Mrs. Jones, I pray that you feel better today. Yeah, I was feeling real bad this morning, but today's sermon really lifted my spirit, so thank you for that. It's like you were talking directly to us, man. I talked to a little bird. You mean my Aunt Gwen? Yeah, Gwen. Told me you need to raise money for expensive medical procedure. Um, whatever the church can do to help be greatly appreciated. We both know that somehow God's going to work it out, but the truth is, it's been pretty scary lately. Your prayer's already been answered, son. There's a bright light shining down on your family. God has an awesome blessing coming your way. Y'all come see me Wednesday, and let's see what the church can help you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. I appreciate you. Thank you for coming. Oh, Dre. Get the and let's go. What's wrong? Hey, well, look, it's Auntie you mean me. More Sean, let's go. <laughs> now, Sean. <Marshawn>. Hi. <laughs> hey, Auntie Mimi. Mm -hmm. Did you have to sing? Oh, yes. And you guys sounded great. Okay, Marshawn, Destiny, let's go. Slow down, Dre. I just need to talk to you guys for a minute. Look, we don't want anything from Kevin. God is going to bless us. Look, sis, you have to trust me. Your family is in danger. Who's after our brother now? The FBI, the police, some gangster. That's not the case. There's some people that want to hurt Marshawn. We're trying to protect y'all. Okay, that's enough, Mimi. Not even Kevin would stoop this low and you would be here to help him do it. Marshawn, do you know a man named Mr. Gardner? Yeah, he used to work at our school. But can you try to say he died? How do you know this Mr. Gardner? Oh, he was the school's custodian. He used to let uh, Marshawn and Squeak practice in the gym at lunch, and in return, Marshawn taught him how to read. Baby, I told you about that. So, they want to hurt my son because he taught some man how to read? We don't know why. All we know is the man gardener was awarded a lot of money when he died. We thought Marshawn might know something. He didn't tell me nothing, I swear. So how y'all know all of this? And how deep is CeeLo involved? Okay, a client came to Skilo to grab a kid. 
Then we found out the kid was Marshawn. We're just trying to get you somewhere safe. And we'll go to the police. Okay, but the guy is connected to some powerful people. There could even be some cops involved. So why should we trust you all? Because we are family, that's why. Look, I'm leaving. If y'all want to stay alive, y'all come and follow me. All right, Charlie. Get ahead of the family, so whatever you decide, that's what we'll follow. I know Kevin hates me, but he will never let anyone hurt you or the kids. We both know that. So I think we go with him until we can figure it out. Okay. Well, let's go. Sure, sure. I have never been in an interrogation room before. Me neither. Well, the good thing is, you aren't suspects. That far. That's him right there. Are you sure about that, Sir Wood? Yeah, that's my ex fiance's father, Raymond Wall. Wall, so the guy that kidnapped us is your ex fiance's father. It's a long story. Well, his real name is Jonathan Curtis, and he's a violent con man with a rap sheet a mile long. You always said it was son. Off about that dude, yeah. You guys may need to find somewhere safe and lay low until I can find Jonathan, AKA Raymond. He's not a nice man. Safe. Well, he definitely knows where I live, so my place is out. And I can't go back to that Airbnb. Well, look, we have everything we need. You're good to go. I've got all the options you're placing, too. But you know, Tamara and I are always looking for new meat to uh, flip on the spades. He has to be talking about you, because he surely ain't talking about me. Thank you, Detective. Uh, we'll keep our heads down until we hear back from you. Yep, the clock is ticking. Gotta go find that kid now. Every second counts. Thank you. I thought you wanted me to rectify things with him. Yeah. Well, things have changed. Look, grab your passport and a few things, then meet me at the address. Are we in trouble, Ray? You said that the last time, and the time before that. Did you forget where you were two years ago? I'm sure the police can refresh your memory. Nine o'clock, Corinne. Right? Uh, Corinne, thank God. I thought you were a burglar. Ray says you were dead. Uh, see, as you can see, I'm very much still alive. But he did tell me how y'all been playing me since day one. Yeah, but Mr. Goody Two Shoes almost messed things up for everybody. <laughs> not fooling no one, Korean. You're not about to stab me. Uh. Yo, she really tried to stab me. Yeah, I don't think your ex likes you very much. What happened to Corinne? She tries to stab Brian. I knocked her off the program that you gave me. Yeah, I told you that they would come in handy. Oh, world star. Y'all uh, be serious for one moment, okay? We gotta call Detective Williams and let her know about the new information we got. What information? Ray texted Corinne the address where he's gonna be tonight. And now we have his number. Yeah, but by the time they meet, he will already have a kid. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Hey, listen. Our only hope is to trace the number, find him before he gets the kid. Nah, nah, we've had too much excitement for one day. Nah, I'm calling Detective Wayne. 
Where is your sense of adventure, bro? Come on! Forget all that. Are you sure that was him, ma'am? Yes. It was my nephew. He stole my Christmas money. Lord, I know my sister turning over in the games. Detective Williams? Detective, it's Brian Woods. We have some new info for you that can help you. Regarding Jonathan Curtis, what do you have? I have the number to the cell phone he's using, and I have the address where he'll be tonight. How did you obtain this info? I went to grab some things from my place, and I overheard him talking to my ex-fiance. Part of laying low, didn't you understand, Mr. Wood? The man you know as Raymond Wall is extremely dangerous. Text me the number and the address, and this time I need you guys to go somewhere and stay out of sight for real. Yeah, because Brian almost got himself killed again. How? Ah, uh, she's just exaggerating. My ex-fiance just tried to stab me, that's all. Uh, are you safe now? And where is she? Laying on the floor. Is she alive? She has a pulse. Okay, uh, stay put. I'm sending some officers there right now. All right, Detective. Okay, where were we? You were supposed to be helping me get my Christmas money back. Hey, everyone. The food is here. Oh, good, because I'm starving. You're always starving, but no matter how much you eat, the only thing that gets big is your head. You talking? No matter how much you don't eat, the only thing that gets smaller is your IQ. <laughs> okay. That's enough. <laughs> Those two remind you of anybody? You talking about me and Kim? Mm -hmm. My clapbacks were way more flying than my shots. Whatever. <laughs> I'm just happy to see my brother act and look human again. Where it's hard to be human, he was raised in the jungle. So you become a beast. Or be devout. Or he walk on faith, knowing that God has got him. Here's your God that now, sis. Huh? Why isn't he here protecting you? Oh, but he is. Look around you, can't you see? What are you talking about? When was the last time we talked? Or laughed? Or ate together? Even though this was a bad circumstance that brought us together? This was all orchestrated by God. Well, one thing I know is I don't know what brought us together, but it sure feels good. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, take this. Yeah. Brother Skilo, you got the kids? Of course. Nah, me and my homies don't hurt kids. Not for all the money in the world. Why your people want this kid dead anyway? Why? Is there a problem? Nah, not at all. I guess I gotta come by tonight and handle it myself. Yeah, you do that. We'll be here. I can't believe you actually came. I told you I would. Here's to more fun times than the law would allow. I got a surprise for you. Close your eyes. So you plan on running off without paying me my money? I'm gonna leave. No, 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 no. You stay. Come on, right? You know I wouldn't stiff you like that. I was just taking a little Christmas trip. That's all. So why are you off with your gift? Who's gonna pay me my money? I was gonna come see you when I got back. I swear. Do I look stupid, Al? 
Damn, it took you long enough. It's done, right? So where's my money? It's all right there. Now make him disappear. It's already done. I got it from here. There's a wanted criminal asleep inside a private jet at the airport. Merry Christmas. Hey, yo, pull over. For what? Hey, yo, just pull over real quick. What, now? Man, if you like these car seats the way they are, you're going to pull over. Ah, oh, bro, you're killing me. So, um, how long had you known that Mr. Darnie was your father? I didn't. And to the guys that my DNA was a match. I was told that my father was some black guy that my mom met in high school. Luckily, one of them told me my father's name. And he told me that my mother met my father at a party. And he said that they planned to run off together after my mom graduated. Once I got a name, I was in a race to find him and find out who he really was. Now, I'll never know. Your mother went into labor, so she called your father and your grandma. When your grandmother arrived, your mother died giving birth. Then, your grandmother saw you, a black baby, lying in a black man's arms. So your grandmother took you away. When the police arrived, all they saw was a black man in shock, standing over a white woman lying in a pool of blood. He was already guilty from the moment they saw him. All I wanted was a chance to tell him that I love him and that I'm sorry for all the pain he had to endure. I'm sure Mr. G is looking down on us right now. Smiling from here to here. You know, I don't get it. What's that? You're a nice guy. You're an attorney. You have a good job. And you're kind of all right looking. Just all right, huh? I don't understand. How did you get mixed up with somebody like her? I just want to come home every day to that person, you know? That can make the sun shine on a rainy day. Most people believe that real love is just some fairy tale, but I believe it's possible. I do too. It's crazy how the good people always end up with the worst people sometimes. Okay, so you think I'm all right looking, but you think I'm a good person. Okay, that's the start. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I say good? <laughs> because I meant great. You're the most considerate, good-hearted, honorable person that I've ever met. Wow. 
I didn't think you noticed anything about me. Oh, what's not to notice? You're a man of your word. You looked out for my father in his dying days. And you saved two people's lives you didn't even know. I never thought of it like that. Truth is, Mr. G gave me way more than I could ever give him. There's nothing I wouldn't give to get a chance to know him. He's a ball of fire. So fun, loving. You know, I never understood how someone could have endured so much pain but still have so much love in their heart. You know, I see some of those things in you. I guess in a way you're right. My life has been a string of painful events in my life. I was abandoned at birth. I grew up in the foster system and I never got a chance to meet my parents. And not to mention my crazy love life. I got some stories to tell. Somehow through it all, that beautiful smile of yours still manages to shine through. She really lost something good. Some woman will see the wonderful man that you are and appreciate you. Attorney Woods. Why can't that woman be you? What's going on in here? I'm leaving leave for five minutes. Y'all turn us to the Motel 6. <laughs> That's good to know. Hello? Brian, this is Detective Williams. We have Ray in custody. I should be safe now. Oh, thank God. What about the kid? Ray's not cooperating with us. He says he knows nothing about a kid, so we're still looking. We'll inform you the second we locate. Thanks, Detective. She will continue to fight for a resolution, not only for her, but for others as well. In local news, police officials ended a 10-year-long manhunt for wanted criminal Jonathan Curtis. As an anonymous caller tipped officials off about a plot with local attorney Albert Rosenberg to steal a $27 million settlement from a dying client. I know why you're stressing, but you can stop stressing now. And why is that? Because the news says the cops have Ray. Somebody probably snitched. Maybe, but I think it was something bigger than the streets that took him down. Call it what you want, karma, God, bad luck. I don't know what it was, but it wasn't the streets. I can't believe Korea and Ray and Mr. Rosenberg were all in on it. You were so focused on finding me to where you were blinded by everything else. Oh. Hope it was all worth it. Oh, absolutely. And some. <laughs> but really, Brian, you gonna dress all stuffy like this on Christmas? What? Should I wear some jeans or something? That'd be better? No. You know what? You do you. <laughs> I love you just the way you are. You know this can get addicting, right? It better be. Merry Christmas, Ma. Jeez, the food smells amazing. Merry Christmas, Mama. Merry Christmas, baby. Hey, no sad faces. It's Christmas. I messed up Christmas for everybody. Sorry. No, you can never do that. You see, you are the reason 
that life is better for all of us. When we're weak, you make us stronger. You're everything we need, Mom. You're my nurse, my teacher, my role model, and my best friend. Because that's the day I was born. You've been my doctor, my teacher, my tutor, and more. But even more than that, Kimberly Ann Jones, you are the glue that holds this family together. So today, like every day, you give us the greatest gift ever, the gift of you. I love you guys. You know, sometimes we tend to forget what's important, like family, love, and some good food. Mm -hmm. Lord knows that everybody didn't wake up to that. And I pray for them. I really do. And I'm thankful for my blessings from God. You're my blessing. You're my blessing. Baby, you're my blessing. Yeah. Why did I know it was you, Squeak? Probably because I'm over here every day, Mr. J. Wonder why. Come on in. Hey, honey, come quick. There's some news crew out front. Merry Christmas. If you're looking for a feel-good story, we have one for you. We're here outside the Jones family home with attorney Brian Woods and Crystal Porter who are here to present the Jones family with a very special Christmas gift. Carmen, today is a testament of how God works in mysterious ways. We are here today to award $7 million to a wonderful young man who befriended and taught a dying man how to read. This is an amazing story. So how did the kid and the rich man know each other? The man, my father, Harvey Gardner, was not rich until his dying days. After being awarded a big settlement from the state? Yes, I do remember that story. We covered that. Unfortunately, I never got to meet my father. But in this last week, I've learned so much about him. So come with us as we give the Jones family a Christmas gift of a lifetime. Oh, no. I'm walking up to our door. Oh, Lord, what has Kevin done now? They won't. Can I help you? Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Jones, I'm going to turn to Brian Woods and... Look, whatever it is my brother did, we had nothing to do with it. We're not here about your brother, Mrs. Jones. We're here because of your son, Marshawn. He befriended our father, Harvey Gardner, and taught him to read before his death. So in appreciation, my father willed Marshawn seven billion dollars. What? Seven million dollars? We're richer than Oprah. I don't want that stupid money. I want Mr. Gardner back. He told me if I keep dreaming out loud, I can be anything. You can make the NBA. Plus, that's that wicked crossover. Remember? Shut up, nerd. So, you're Crystal? How'd you know my name? All the papers Mr. Gardner had me teach you. There were legal papers to find you. All he ever talked about was. The moment he looked into your eyes to tell you how much you looked. So beautiful. Well, come on in. <laughs> we don't have much, but we're really good care. I'll be happy to escort you, Miss Crystal. We were alone in Creek. Might affect some jealousy, my sweet thing. You're impossible.
Mimi, Kevin, what brings y'all here? Last time I checked, it was Christmas. Yeah. Ho, ho, ho. Mm -hmm. Well, you can't celebrate Christmas with the family? Okay. What's really cool? Y'all never celebrate Christmas. We do today. So you're going to invite us in. We got gifts. What can I say? Merry Christmas. Good morning, y'all. Don't look at page three because he's got he's got a picture of himself on the toilet. I'm sorry, baby. Everyone, look who's here. Merry Christmas, everyone. Ho ho ho! <laughs> what have you two been drinking or smoking? Relax, sis. Enjoy the moment. Isn't that what you tell me? Here you go, this. I wonder what it is. Please don't open it at the table. It's a new phone, isn't it? Mm-hmm. So, um, what y'all get me? Wait, I'm gonna shut mine. Here you go, big man. It looks like a new video game console. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thanks, Ivy. You're welcome. And Uncle Kevin. Thought you forgot me. Okay. What's really going on, Kevin? That's my thanks to you for breaking the cycle for me and Don and our family. These streets. I don't understand. Don't you hate? We go. Hold on, Dre. Let me finish. See, because of you, Marshawn may be the only male in our family to never see the inside of a prison cell or die in these streets. Mm. That's the priceless gift you brought to this family, bro. Respect. Okay, just to lighten things up just a little, we have two more gifts. Here, sis. What is for you? Oh, you no gifts? Oh, I mean, oh, gifts. <sighs> Babe, mm -hmm. this is a mock invitation to our wedding. <laughs> it's beautiful. But this this isn't the date we got married. It's not a mock invitation, it's a... Because you guys are always taking care of me, trying to get me out of jail. And you didn't get a wedding. So I owe you that. And we also threw in a seven-day honeymoon to Cancun. Oh. Hold on, hold on. Don't say no yet. Don't say no. Say okay. Yes. So, we saved the best for last. Dre. Remember when we were kids, you always wanted to open your own restaurant? Dre Burgers, right? Yep. So, we want to give you a check for a hundred thousand dollars so you can open Dre Burgers. You know what? I, I see what you're doing here, man. That check is not to help me open up my own business. You're giving me that because you know the first thing I'm going to do with that is to go and get Kim's treatments. Okay, so what's wrong with that? What's wrong with me helping my family out? Just like you, I couldn't imagine seeing this amazing woman lose her life. Everything, everything that you guys have done, it's, it's beautiful. But um, the answer's no. What? No. Come on, sis. What? Just hold on a second, okay? Me? We no longer need the money. What? You're cured? No. We're richer than Okra now. <laughs> so we can pay for it. What? What is she talking about? Look, we are not richer than Oprah. Not even close. Oprah's a billionaire. <laughs> Marshawn was gifted $7 million. 
It's a long story. <laughs> Thank you, G. You really came through big time. Hey, you're talking to yourself. You're not about to flip out, are you? Huh, no. I was just thinking, you really came through. You know, before dad died, I say he got killed. Mom OD. I had lost my faith. Thought he had abandoned us. But he was still all alone. You know what I realized? Faith isn't just seeing. It's believing. Well, I'm glad he brought you and Mimi here. Not just for the gifts. But because you brought our family back together. This is what God had in mind. And you don't always have to be the tough guy. <laughs> Excuse me, everyone. I would like to make a toast to uh, Mr. Gardner, the Jones family, to this beautiful woman right here for reminding us how wonderful life's greatest gifts, love, happiness, peace, family, and good health truly are. Yeah, um, sorry, I didn't, didn't bring anything, but here, <laughs> um, cheers. And, uh, what about good food? Oh, oh. Yeah. Of course you would say that. Amen to the love part. <laughs> Look who came back. Yeah. Girl, you here? I thought I locked the door. <laughs>